Hey, what's going on guys and girls? Hard Drive here at Fine Tune CB. I haven't done a video on one of these in a long time. It's a 655. Yep, this one's on its way to Georgia. And uh, it, they're still a good radio. Anyways, they're doing a little bit more than the 955s. Not much. But I'm still impressed with how clean the transmit is. Yes, they do pick up lead over. It's the same receiver. Yes, my tune, they are great. If you're going to be here, sit around a truck stop and be on a different channel, the bleed over is going to piss you off. It will. It's not the radio's problem. It's not the radio's fault. It's the butchered radios that do it. Anyways, let's take a look at this, and then I got a little added feature I want to show you. So stay tuned in to the end of the video. It's that little two pill you sent in, so you know whose it is. I'm not getting into any names who built it or what. Let them see the video, all right? All right, here we go. That's awesome, okay? That's doing good. For a black box radio, that's doing really good. Power all the way down. Now let's take a look at it. Let's just go straight to 30. 300 and come back to 30. It's doing exceptionally well. Okay? Nothing. Nothing strange. No spurry submissions, harmonics, and spectrally pure all the way through. It's doing a great job. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, everybody wants to see the meter. Let's do it like this for you. As a matter of fact, well, okay, hold on. I'll use uh, what I always use, what I recommend, and the contour of the tune is set up for basically this mic. Audio 78910, let's hear it. Let's just talk back then. I'll let you hear it on the Ranger. Audio 78910, breaker, breaker, breaker. Yeah, I'm just talking straight into it. One, two, three, four, five. Turn that off. Let's get this thing going. And again, it's going to be hard to tell anything on the noise. I'll start doing more line levels in the future. Audio 1, 2, 3, 4. This back on the load. 78910, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, break, 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 audio, 78910, break, 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 okay, no echo at all, 78910, break, 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 everybody else that does not have one of my radios, you'll notice that when you turn the echo on, it turns into a mud duck, you know, all your power is below the noise floor, in the noise floor, it might sound good in the truck stop, but just doesn't have that range. Well, there's the difference right there. Pay attention to what you see. Look at all the letters. Well, S's, N's, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, break, 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 and listen to it. 7, 8, 9, 10, break, mic gate wide open. Now I'll turn the echo on. You can hear the difference. And we'll give it a little bit more sound to it. Audio, 7, 8, 9, 10, breaker, breaker, breaker. Yeah, it's crystal clear, and I'm not yelling into the microphone. All the power is exactly where it needs to be. All right. I'll turn it up a little bit more. It's going to be in my... It's going to squeal, though, you know? It's going to squeal if I go too loud. Audio 78910, breaker, 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 audio. All right, so now, let's pull this off. We know this is a spotless radio. Right. Let's plug this in. I don't know. Let's drop it down. It's maybe a couple watts. And there's four, so we know we're gonna. I need to get a reference here. Okay, so that's that. 
Let's get this out of the way here. Let's get this in the picture. All right. Now I've already checked it out to a point. Now watch it make me look like someone that the car don't start. They finally get it started, get it to the garage. And the mechanic asks, the mechanic asks you what's wrong, and you say it won't start. And he's like, "Well, how'd you get it here?" And then every time you start it, it starts. <laughs> make you look like a flipping moron, right? Well, hopefully this is gonna do what caused all the solder. Hold on, let me get a pointer here to melt off this capacitor and run down. And you can see it. Focus. And I can snap a picture. Okay. It looks like a regular typical kit for 2879's Toshiba's, the values, etc. This cap, though, I'm not sure about the value. I'd have to check it. It's actual tolerance, you know. I know it looks like a little cheap thing, don't it? And it's not. Very accurate. But the material it's made out of, once it gets hot, it changes value. After it's been hot so many times, it's, when, it, when it cools off, it even has a different value. So we're going to check it real quick with a half wavelength tuned coax. We're going to check it with 32 inch. Just because that's what it was, 32 inch. On the antenna and off the antenna with this. And then hopefully, you know, it's kind of strange that I say that. It goes into self-oscillation. Alright. So I really need to try to keep everything in here. So you actually see. You don't really need to see the radio. All these wires here. Get a closer look at the amp. Let me see if I can pull it in so you can see it. The way it's assembled is not bad. Your buddy needs to practice up on his soldering skills, though, really. I'm not picking on you. But uh, you know, a little bit of practice on the soldering skills, because this thing does work. It's this one. And oh, I'd stick a little fan right here. Figure out the value, clean them up, put a fan on, and about there, down. You could blow up. Up I wouldn't do, okay? This one you want to blow down. It's going to blow down over the transistors, out the back, and out both sides. Cool little amp. It is. I've seen these doing numbers that I don't even want to tell you. But anyways, right, it's off. Let's plug this straight in. It's already hooked up. Alright, now we're going to go and take this 100 watt out of here and pop in a 500. Oh, by the way, remember the waveform? I'll do it again. Well, some people say, oh, you can manipulate the way it works, looks on the scope. Are you flipping nuts and stupid, or who are you trying to convince? No. And they don't lie. Anyways. Radio, okay? Let's get it right in there. This one has a fresh NIST certification calibration video on it. It's just brand new. This ain't new, but the calibration is. So there it is. All right. We still got to get the power ratio right away. I see a key about 50 watts. So I'm going to get 50 watts. Back off, do this again. That's what we're putting into it, right? So now we're going to turn it down so it's proportional. You 
see the difference. I mean, it shows 200, but in all reality, all we're getting is a little over 150. That would make it sound louder, but no, it's splatter. Let's go to 60. Just by turning it on, we see the first harmonic. Now it's really going to be ridiculous. Now we're going to go to, say, 300. See the harmonics? Okay. Now we're going to go back to 30. Stick with me for a minute. Right, now that's with the half wavelength tune on a tuned bench. I've got videos on how everything's done, how this bench is set up. I'm going to go to the antenna. I'll move this, even though I don't like to, because all the RF. This is still stuck on here. It's hot as hell. My fingers, by the way, all right, are like really used to this. Freaky shit, ain't it? Not all my fingers, only certain ones. I'm just getting so used to doing this. There's the antenna. Now, it might go into self-oscillation. It might not. I don't want to sit here and try to burn this thing up. I've been thinking about, and I'm trying to justify buying a Cat S60 phone so I don't have to buy a phone and a camera so I can do thermal imaging. But it's just six to eight hundred bucks to show a video of this. It's like my foot, you know what I mean? So, uh, anyways, let's, let's, let's do this. Now, watch everything all at the same time. The pass-through tune on this is just fine. You might be wondering why I don't have all these extra meters, because I don't need them. I have this and math, all right? And I can see the meter on the front of the radio, but still. An SWR change versus reflect is two different things. They can, they work in harmony, that's a cool word, huh? But uh, they're different. Okay, we're on the antenna. It just went in. Back up the video. Okay, now I have to shut it off. See everything? That's the shit that can send you to the angels or wherever you prefer. <laughs> you know, that's the shit. And that's what melted all the solder off there. See the pools down there? It went into self oscillation. So let's take, let's take another reading. Let's let it heat, it's getting hot. You see it? If you don't jerk the power, now some of them, the way they're wired, turn the power off ain't gonna help you. It's gonna sit there and cook, cook, and cook, RF, cook, and cook until the positive wire comes off, the diodes, resistors start melting around. You can go like this, and the puddles of solder would run all over the place. And foo by your ass, you know what I mean? Does it happen every time? No, it doesn't. Proper fusing, you catch it, or you wonder why your shit don't work the next day. Or fill your truck up with smoke and asphyxiate, and never wake up at all, or burn the truck to the ground. How many drivers do you think have ripped their shit out of their truck and threw it in the... I caught myself, threw it in the ditch or hid it from the police department, the fire department, and their boss because their truck burned to the ground. But you never hear about it because they're not telling the truth. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. So let's flip this one here. Nothing else has changed. Flip the switch. Let's turn it on. Instantaneously, it unkeyed though. And that's all your crazy SWRs, your reflect, all the hoodoo voodoo bullshit. You know? Let me go to the load. 
We have another set. It just kind of went away. Do you see that? As this thing changes temperature. Now it just came back again. Just put my finger by it. Change things around. Okay, see that? That's going to come off. Your buddy may have tuned it by the, its position. It could have got hot enough. Well, no, I doubt that. Maybe it was touched. Yeah, I don't think it got hot enough to fall over by itself. I really doubt that. It would have came loose and fallen off somewhere. Let's try this again. Let's put it back in the position it wasn't. Don't break off. As you can see, it was touching it. Well, it's going to come up in a minute. That's on the load. Antenna. Nightmare. See it? We did unkey. Let's go to 300 now. I can smell it. Negative ions. That RF's all over the place. What RF is it? Let's watch. Oh, the wonderful squeal. Yeah, there we go. Shit. Look at that. Let's go to 500. Which my stuff can't really read much more than that. Get the point? You wonder why you have all this squealing? You can't set your SWRs? Now it could be the heat, the, the value of this might not longer even be the value that it was supposed to be because it's been hot so many times. It could have been your antenna system. Could have been the coax length, could have been your grounds, could have been the RF and DC potentials, could have been common mode, could have been a lot of different things. By now, you guys are realizing I'm talking to a whole bunch of you at one time. I try to kill as many birds at one stone whenever I get the opportunity. I'm not ragging on your buddy. It's kind of cool looking. And, uh, could it rip out some power? It can. But it's got to be fairly clean and it's going to need a fan. Otherwise, there's no way this heat sink. See it? See how much more narrow it is? It's going to cool 22879s for a long period of time. Due to this design, you can fit something in there. See that far back? something square, well round to fit in that square area, blowing that air through. Forget the noise, keep it cool. Alright, I've been babbling on here long enough. I hope some of this was educational. It's always the same shit. I mean, it's been this same shit forever. A lot of you guys know when I was in certain locations, if you came in with an amplifier, you know what I'd have told you. I just get sick of it. Totally sick of it. Y'all have an awesome day. It's almost my bedtime. <laughs> Going on one o'clock. Let me see what day it is. That's how I knew what day it was doing those West Coast turnarounds. Can I see your logbook? Y'all have a great day. Later. <laughs>